Knott's Berry Farm is the self-proclaimed first theme park in America. Whether or not that claim is true is up for debate, but what few can argue is that Knott's Berry Farm is one of the best theme parks in the United States because it blends thrills and atmosphere quite well. So in this video, I will review Knott's Berry Farm and explain why you should include this park on a trip to Southern California. Knott's is owned by Cedar Fair and it's located in the competitive Southern California theme park market. You have the Disneyland Resort just 10 minutes down the road, and to the north, you have Universal Studios Hollywood and Six Flags Magic Mountain, and to the south, you have SeaWorld San Diego. But Knott's fills a niche. Knott's blends thrills and theming, the best of all these parks. For that reason, I think you could make the argument that this park appeals to the broadest market. So it's no surprise that Knott's Berry Farm is among the most well-attended parks in the United States. It placed 11th in 2019, just behind the Disney parks, the Universal parks, and SeaWorld Orlando. This park has a really unique history too. The park originally started as a berry farm and marketplace in the 1920s. In 1934, the Knott family started selling fried chicken dinners which was the catalyst that saw Knott's explode into what it is today. Because of how popular the chicken restaurant was, Knott's needed a way to entertain guests while waiting for a seat. This started with an expanded marketplace. Then in 1940, the Knott family began building a replica ghost town on the property. Then in the 1950s and 1960s, the park expanded their ghost town area to start offering amusement rides including the popular Calico Mine Ride and the Timber Mountain Log Ride, and you can find both those attractions today. So in just a few decades, Knott's organically grew from a farm stand into an amusement destination. The park started adding roller coasters in the 1970s. Instead of starting small, Knott's made three big splashes. First was the Corkscrew in 1975, the Aerodynamics Coaster that was the first modern inverting coaster. The ride was relocated to Silverwood in 1990, where it still operates today as Corkscrew. Meanwhile, Knott's replaced Corkscrew with Boomerang and later with Hangtime. Second was the Motorcycle Chase Steeplechase ride in 1976. This was another Arrow creation and the first of only two steeplechase coasters they would ever build. This quad track racing coaster was rethemed as the Wacky Soapbox Racers in 1980. This ride would be removed after the 1996 season. It would first be replaced by the ill-fated Windjammer Surf Racers, and then by Accelerator. Third was Montezuma's Revenge in 1978. This Schwarzkopf roller coaster was one of the first shuttle loops and first launch roller coasters in the world. And unlike the prior two coasters, it still operates in the park today. And that touches on one of the biggest issues with Knott's Berry Farm, its size. The park is 57 acres in size, which is shockingly small for a park of this caliber. While the park doesn't feel as congested as Disneyland, the pathways here are wider and the park is roughly half the attendance, the park is completely developed and landlocked. As a result, Knott's often has to remove something to add something. So if you look at its collection of rides that have been removed over the years, you'll see a lot of unique things, such as the Hammerhead, the Zamperla Roto Shake Inverting Flat Ride, Tampico Tumbler, the Rare Zyre Hexenton Spinning Ride, Whirlpool, the Indoor Scrambler, which was relocated outdoors, and Perilous Plunge, the shockingly steep Intamin Shoot the Shoots Ride with a 15-story plunge. More recently, Knott's has been plussing current rides as opposed to removing them. This is a way to not only keep popular attractions for several more years, but it gives the park something to market to its nostalgic fan base. The best examples of this were the refurbishment of the Timber Mountain Log Ride in 2013, the refurbishment of the Calico Mine Ride in 2014, the complete retracking of Ghost Rider in 2016, the conversion of Bigfoot Rapids into Calico River Rapids in 2019, and the conversion of the Voyage to the Iron Reef Dark Ride into Knott's Berry Tales whenever Knott's is allowed to reopen following the pandemic. And there was a chance that Knott's could have looked a lot different today. There was a scenario where this park wouldn't even be called Knott's Berry Farm. In the mid-1990s, the Knott family was looking to sell their park. 
and one of the potential buyers was Disney, who wanted to rename the park Disney's America and assimilate it into the Disneyland Resort. The Knott family instead sold the park to Cedar Fair in 1997, believing that chain would retain the park's legacy and charm. I never visited the park before it was acquired by Cedar Fair, but the front half of the park feels distinctly different than any other park in the chain. This part of the park feels like the two premier Hershen parks in Dollywood and Silver Dollar City, and I mean that as a compliment. The ghost town area in particular has an incredible atmosphere, with the shops, shows, theming, and unique rides. The Fiesta Village and Camp Snoopy areas are quite scenic as well, with the abundance of trees. This atmosphere is one of the main reasons I think it's a top tier Cedar Fair Park. However, the back half of the park feels like a generic Cedar Fair Park. The boardwalk area stands out like a sore thumb in contrast to the rest of the well-themed park. The boardwalk area doesn't look bad by any means, it's extremely well kept and clean, but it just doesn't mesh with the front half of the park in my opinion from an atmosphere standpoint. So in a way, Knott's feels like two entirely different parks merged into one. The Cedar Fair acquisition has given Knott's some of their best thrill rides, and those rides still pull long lines today. Ghost Rider always has a lengthy line even on a quiet day because of that ride's immense popularity and slow dispatches. But it did start offering a single rider line right before the pandemic shutdown, and that gets you on the ride relatively quickly from my experiences. Accelerator and Hang Time usually have sizable lines as well, considering that they're arguably the two most intense rides in the park. Because I don't visit this park too often, I often budget for fast lane if I'm visiting on a weekend or a summer day. But I have had some quiet days towards the start of the Knott's Merry Farm event and the first quarter of the year that didn't require fast lane. Operations at this park are a mixed bag. On one hand, the park is very proactive at updating the refurbishment calendar, which is much appreciated for a year-round park such as this. And outside the expected refurbs, I usually find everything open here, unless you visit on one of the rare rainy days in Southern California. I strongly recommend avoiding this park on a rainy day because all the coasters will close even in a light drizzle. Dispatches are average. Ghost Rider is the only one that is egregiously bad. But Ghost Rider is still worth the wait because it's the park's best attraction. This wood coaster was originally designed by CCI. It got brutally rough after a decade of continuous operation, but Knott's had GCI come in and completely renovate the ride in 2016. And now, it's as smooth as a wood coaster can be. The ride has near perfect pacing. It feels fast, and it constantly throws airtime hills, laterals, or sometimes both simultaneously at riders. I have a separate review in this one if you want to hear more why I love this ride, but it really is one of the best wood coasters in the world. Accelerator is the park's most intense ride. This Intamin hydraulic launch coaster has one of the strongest launches in the world. It always causes my stomach to drop, and the top hat delivers some great ejector airtime as well. I have a separate review in this coaster as well, also going into more detail, but it's an absolute adrenaline rush. Just beware the front line for this coaster. It starts ridiculously early in the queue, and if it's full, it can easily add 45 to 60 minutes to your wait, and I'm not even kidding. If this is backed up out of the station, avoid this line. The front is the best seat on accelerator though, so I recommend heading here early before that line backs up. The park's newest roller coaster is Hang Time. This Gerslauer Infinity Coaster was marketed as the first dive coaster in California. This is another claim that can be debated, but the key thing here is that this ride is just pure fun. The ride doesn't offer much hang time like the name would suggest. Instead, the highlights are the ejector airtime on the Beyond Vertical First Drop, the disorienting inversions, and the incredible KCL lighting package that comes on at night. Those lights are an attraction in itself. This is yet another ride I have a separate review on if you want to learn more. Silver Bullet is a polarizing coaster for coaster enthusiasts. On one hand, it's sort of an eyesore in the front of the park, and it's also towards the bottom of the B&M invert list. But that doesn't make it a bad ride. This ride is impeccably smooth, it has a fantastic finale. The final corkscrews are snappy, and the final helix pulls some serious G's. 
I go into more detail in my review for this coaster, but it's probably the best coaster in the park if inversions are what you're looking for. The aforementioned Montezuma's Revenge is the park's oldest currently operating roller coaster, but it's still a blast. Literally. The launch has a decent punch to it, and the circular loop pulls some strong G's. Plus, you get some weightlessness on the spike. The park has four family coasters, but they're a bit flawed in my opinion. Sierra Sidewinder is a thrilling mock spinner. I love this ride, but it's because of how much it spins and the force in the turns. It may honestly be too much for some younger guests, but it is the coaster with the lowest height restriction after the Kitty Coaster. Jaguar and Pony Express are much tamer in my opinion, but those rides have 48 inch height requirements. Those rides are more about the visuals than the thrills. I have a separate review on Pony Express that touches on this more. And then Coast Rider is a great option for kids, but anyone with long legs is going to despise this mock wild mouse. This ride was retrofit with shin guards a few years ago, and they will press tightly into your legs, turning a slow wild mouse coaster into an excruciating torture machine. Last but not least, Timberline Twister is an enjoyable kitty coaster, but it is a very tight squeeze for adults if you're even allowed to get on. The max height is 69 inches. I'm right at that mark, and it was a struggle for me to get into those trains. For water rides, you have two standouts. The Timber Mountain Log Ride is one of the best in the genre. This ride is an older arrow log flume. The final drop is just okay, but the drop inside the mountain is a wonderful surprise, and the ride has some extended show scenes with some Disney quality animatronics. Calico River Rapids is a great River Rapids ride. The ride has a variety of ways to get you wet, from random rapids and geysers, but it also includes some great animatronics and sound effects that really make this ride fit in with Ghost Town and stand out from similar rides at other parks. For dark rides, you have two. I'm personally not the biggest fan of them, but they do provide a nice contrast from the rest of the park's offerings. Calico Mine Ride has a unique ride system and a grand indoor set piece you pass several times. Voyage to the Iron Reef was an okay Triotech shooting dark ride. I wasn't a big fan of the animation, but I think that style will work better for the re-theme to Knott's Berry Tales. For flat rides, you have several spinning rides, many of which are in the boardwalk area, and then you have three thrill rides that are cut above the rest. Soul Spin is a rare Mondial top scan. This one doesn't run the most extreme program, but it still offers a few flips and some violent rocking. Supreme Scream is a colossal SNS drop tower that gives a great view of the park if you're on the correct side, and the drop gives a nice pop of airtime at the start. La Revolution is a chance frisbee with tons of max swings. This one has a nice long cycle, and each swing gives a nice pop of airtime. For the kids, you have a huge Camp Snoopy area, and I like how this area combines rides exclusively for kids with some larger rides that can comfortably seat adults as well. Since Knott's is open year-round, they have all sorts of seasonal events. The three most notable are the Boysenberry Food Festival, the Knott's Scary Farm Halloween event, and the Knott's Merry Farm Christmas event. I have personally only done Knott's Merry Farm, and the park has some nice lights throughout the park. They also have some overlays of a few of their attractions, but I have heard their Halloween event is one of the best anywhere and I need to make it back there someday to experience it. In terms of food, I have never actually eaten anything inside the park itself, but I always make it a priority to eat at Mrs. Knott's famous chicken dinner restaurant just outside the main entrance. This restaurant is literally the reason this park even exists, and the food is delicious. I love the fried chicken, and you get a boatload of food. Each meal comes with mouthwatering biscuits, super salad, and a slice of their famous boysenberry pie. It's one of my favorite restaurants anywhere. Many people visit Knott's just for this restaurant and the marketplace, so the closest parking lot is reserved for these. This makes it a bit tricky, at least for me, to find the correct parking lot. I always seem to get lost in the signage and circle around the park before remembering that the entrance to the theme park parking lot is on the left side. If you drive through the marketplace, you've missed the turn. Of all the parks in California, I personally have Knott's Berry Farm fourth. 
I far prefer Disneyland to Knott's, but I placed Knott's just a hair behind Six Flags Magic Mountain and Disney California Adventure. As I mentioned earlier, Knott's blends thrills and theming very well. I love their coaster lineup, their few themed attractions, and the atmosphere of the front half of the park. But if Knott's somehow found a way to get another major steel coaster into this park, I could see this park vaulting up to my second favorite park in the state. So those are my thoughts on Knott's Berry Farm, the fantastic park in Southern California. Have you been there? What are your thoughts on this park? I'd especially be interested to hear from those who visited before and after the Cedar Fair acquisition. Let me know what you think down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.